Hey guys, this is Brad from Dallas Geek, and I'm here today with Taryn McMullen. And we're here to talk about your book called Gathering Courage, Gathering Courage. A Life Changing Journey Through Adoption, Adversity, and a Reading Disability. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the book. What, what's the premise of it? Yes, it is to help folks who are going through adversity know that they too can survive hard times and be extremely successful. Awesome. You were telling me a bit ago that this is nonfiction, autobiographical. This is all about you and your uh, life growing up. Absolutely. Okay. Brad, my life started in Fort Worth, Texas. And along the Fort Worth stock yards, yep. there lies the remnants of a railroad track. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and on that railroad track, many, many years ago, there was a train that was coming from the East Coast to the West. Okay. Now, Fort Worth was a big hub for carrying livestock yep. coming and going. This train was different because it carried orphans coming from the East Coast to the West, hmm. sent away from their homes. Some of them were in orphanages, some of them were in foster care. So the state of Texas and Fort Worth, knowing these trains were coming, got together with the Reverend Morris and they developed the first foster home system in the state of Texas. But along with that, Mrs. Edna Gladney steps in and becomes the home's supervisor. So in June of 1954, I am adopted and left in the Edna Gladney home. So Mrs. Gladney personally found a family that wanted to raise me and they adopted me and I blended in perfectly. After a while, when I started school, they began to realize that Terry's not doing very well in school mm -hmm. and they didn't have the answers. Sure. Well, it turns out I had a reading disability. Okay. So I was failing. So in the fifth grade, the answer to my failing grades was to send me away and put me in foster care. Oh, wow. So you see that one person can make a difference with the Reverend Morris and the Mrs. Gladney who developed all these programs to help children lo and behold came along and it ended up helping me. Wow. So I spent six months in foster care and one of my neighbors from my hometown heard about my situation so he brought me one of his horses to ride and keep while I was in foster care and that was a huge help to me. It helped me get through a tough situation and a lot of adversity. Sure. So after my uh, at the end of the fifth grade and I was promoted to the sixth, I was able to go back home into the family that had adopted me. But Mr. Luke, the man who brought me a horse, allowed me to ride horses with his family and spend a lot of time with them. And that was great because I love horses. And, sure. and if the truth be known, it's really in my blood. Yeah. So Mr. Luke and his family taught me about horses and how to care for them, take care of the equipment, and a lot about farm work. So as time went on and I made it all the way through high school, I kind of lived along. My grades were not very good because I still had a reading disability that was never addressed through the school system or in foster care. Sure. I graduate from high school. I go to work for a veterinarian and I love that and out at the barn. The, kiddos needed some help with their horses so I started a 4-H program and taught those young people just like Mr. Luke taught me huh. and how to care for horses. So one day we were at a, a state program for 4-H and there was a gentleman there from Texas A&M University who said to me, Terry, you're the type of person that we need in our horse program. Well that sparked a huge interest inside of me. So. I thought, maybe I need to go to college. So I didn't have the grades, I didn't have any money, I was working my way through life, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And I went home and I told my parents, I want to go to Texas A&M and learn about horses and study. And they were not very uh, positive, but there was a friend at our house at that time and she kind of took me aside and said, Terry, you know, you were made in God's image and you could be anything you want to be. So, a few months later, I enrolled in a local community college. At the time, it was called a junior college. Mm -hmm. And I started earning credits that I needed to attend college, a four-year university. And after I'd earned some credits, I would drive from my hometown up to College Station and see the registrar at Texas A&M University. And he looked at my grades. He never discouraged me. He never said, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. 
He said, Terry, when you bring your grades up, I will let you in on probation. Wow. So I went back, I would take more classes and, and increase my credits and my grade point average. And after three visits back to Texas A&M University, he said, it's time to cut bait or go fishing. So I was very honored that he allowed me to enter A&M. Long story short, I graduated with two degrees from A&M, worked my way through college, and have become a teacher. And then from there, I became a writer. And years later, actually about five years later, I wrote Gathering Courage, a life-changing journey through adoption, adversity, and a reading disability. And just last year, it won its 12th book award. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm very proud of all of them. The North American Book Award, and the Reader's Favorite, the uh, Best Book Award. The one I'm really most proud of is called the Enduring Light Medal Award. And it was the second place for Christian thought with a message with an enduring theme. Wow. And I've just recently retired from teaching after 35 years. And now I'm a speaker and a motivational, inspiring speaker, if you could say it that way, sure. for students in school who are having trouble or students with a reading disability. Yeah. And for teachers to know that really one person in your life can make a difference. And sometimes we are that one person. Wow. Very nice. That, that is a very wonderful story. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, there's a, it sounds like there's a lot packed in there. So does it focus, uh, does the book focus more on your internal journey or the uh, specific events that uh, happened to you as uh, you grew up? I'm going to say both. Okay. That's a great question. Yes, a lot of it was internal things that happened and, and how you react to those things. And your reaction can make you or break you. Yeah. And, and that's one of the biggest things that I talk to young people about that, yes, we all have struggles and hard times, but if we stay focused from the inside out, we can make it and we can become very successful. Nice. And then to turn around and help others to do the same. Very nice. Out of curiosity, what inspires you to write this kind of book? Uh, is it just that you, you really wanted to get your story out there? Or was there a certain element of this that you felt people could really connect with and uh, internalize for themselves? I think there was a need. Okay. And actually, as an educator, I see students with dyslexia struggle with reading. And that's part of this book in the latter chapters is how I sit and talk with kids with the same reading disability that I have, yeah. how I got through A&M, and taught myself how to read. Mm -hmm. And that's a big help to them. And then there's a lot of stories in here about animals and horseback riding up in the mountains of Wyoming, back in the wilderness, and that's full of pictures. Very nice. Is this your first book to uh, write, or have, do you have any others uh, in your uh, library of work? This is actually my second. Okay. I co-authored a book called Science Fair, a step-by-step -step approach that was published by Prentice Hall Publishing Company. Okay. And this is my second book, and I just am extremely humbled of the awards that it has won, but most of all, the people that it has helped. Very nice. So if our audience at home uh, wants to uh, run out and grab a hold of your book right now, where are the best places they can find it? Several places. Uh, Amazon okay. with Gathering Courage Media and it's under the initials T.A. McMullen. Mm -hmm. And then I have a website called GatheringCourageMedia.com. Okay. Well, if you are interested in checking out her book, uh, the links for all those locations are going to be down in the description. So be sure to go check it out. And until next time, this is Brad Vidalski saying, see ya.